Hello everybody, this is Chuck Carnivale, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool. With this video, I'm going to take a look at Western Digital Corporation. This is part of my YouTube channel subscriber request series. You know, I can't look at every stock that everybody asks for. I wish I could, but I don't have time. But I do try to find some or pick some out that people have asked about that I find interesting. And frankly, Western Digital is not the kind of company that I would probably personally ever invest in. And let me explain why. Number one is you can see the cyclicality of the stock. If I take price and a normal PE off the graph, you can see that there's a lot of cyclicality in the earnings. The earnings go up and down quite a bit. And when they do go up, they can go up dramatically, 125% for the fiscal year ending June of 08, followed by, of course, the Great Recession down 40%, followed by a 138% increase, followed by a minus 46% drop, followed by 162%. So you can see it graphically here, but the numbers are also very revealing. And then you have this period of time where the company's only been paying a dividend since 2013. That's the white line. The dividend has been frozen, so there's really not any dividend growth, even though it does offer a 3% yield. And the company only trades at four times earnings. It is a $17 billion market cap, double B plus rated with debt to capital. Now, a couple of interesting things. When I put price on the graph, monthly closing stock price, first thing I want you to notice that generally the price tends to be below the orange line, which is a utilizing a form of discounted cash flow analysis, a fair valuation reference. In this case, it's a PE of 15. If I put the normal PE, which is simply a PE that the market has most commonly applied or has had a pension to apply to the company over this time frame, you can see that it's only trading at a 9 PE. So currently it's trading about at half its historical normal valuation. Now, a a lot of that is attributed to the fact or can be attributed to the fact that the company is expected to have a 20% drop in earnings for the fiscal year ending in June of 2019. It had a very good year in 2018 as well as 2017. And by the way, there was some really good price performance. So I don't know the inner workings of this company. I'm not really sure what caused this huge drop, but the stock does look fairly, you know, attractively valued at this level. But again, I want to remind you of the six locality. If I go down and look at forecasting on this company using the normal multiple here, the normal PE ratio, which is nine, if this stock went back to its normal PE, there would be some tremendous rate of return opportunities over the next couple of years. But again, I'm looking at these estimates here. So let's check out the analyst scorecard. And the analyst scorecard for the one year forward forecast is not too bad. For the two year forward forecast, it's not too bad. To summarize that, you know, analysts have missed about 17% of the time, but the company has, it's only over the last five years, I might point out which has been a major bull market. But there's a lot of things about this company that I don't like. I don't like the cyclicality, etc. But there's also a lot of things I do like. And what I do like is the low valuation and the high dividend yield. Even though the dividend hasn't grown, they have maintained their dividend since they started paying one. Now, when I'm evaluating a dividend paying stock, and this one does offer a very attractive 3.3% yield, you can see that this company is traded at about six times operating cash flow. But I'm not personally usually too interested in cash flow and price relationships on stocks. What I'm really most interested in looking at operating cash flow is to look for dividend coverage. And this company is only paying out about, well, you know, from 10 to let's say 20%. Last year, they only paid out 14% of their operating cash flow. The reason that number varies so much, again, is attributed to the cyclicality of the company. Free cash flow is another one. Now, operating cash flow was well covered. They obviously had plenty of operating cash flow. And likewise, if I look at free cash flow. And this is what's left over after spending the money it takes to run, you know, to keep the business running. So we've got plenty of free cash flow. The free cash flow payout ratio has likewise been as low as 10 or 11% and as high as 34%. Last year, it was about 17%. So they've got plenty of cash flow to cover their dividend and still plenty left over to pay off their debt or to continue, you know, to work their debt. So from a dividend perspective, the dividend looks quite safe. I'm a little miffed at why the company does doesn't raise the dividend other than the fact that it's so cyclical that they're probably a little more cautious than some stocks would be. When I'm looking at EBITDA or earnings before interest taxes, depreciation and amortization, EBITDA growth has been really exceptional and the company is really being valued very cheaply. Their normal price to EBITDA over the last five years has been five and a half. They're currently trading at three times EBITDA. So once again, utilizing this metric, you have some really interesting rate of return potentials, you know, 44% 
assuming the estimates are correct. And once again, looking at the scorecard, you know, the EBITDA estimates have been a little worse than the earnings. They've missed it about a third of the time on the one year. And interestingly, only 17% on the two year. What I'm really suggesting here is, ladies and gentlemen, this is a company that really has this kind of cyclicality built into its operating results is very difficult to forecast. But given all that, this would be one that would be worth taking a closer look at. I would consider it an undervalued research candidate that you might want to check out further. If you've enjoyed this Analyze Out Loud video and find the Fast Graph research tool intriguing, you can always give us a call at the number on the screen or log on to www.fastgraphs.com and we'd be delighted to answer any questions. We offer a 14-day free trial. It's a good research tool, and I hope you get some insights into how I use that tool. I use it to show me how the market's valuing a stock and whether or not the risk-reward ratio makes enough sense to be an investor or not. Anyway, this has been Chuck Carnival saying thanks for watching.